We all know this scene, don't we? A sunny morning on a quiet, ordinary-looking neighborhood street. Ah, but it's no ordinary day for the little girl who lives in this house. Something special, something exciting is happening to her. It's her birthday. And here's the mailman with a handful of messages for Alice. Birthday cards sent by her relatives, friends, and playmates. Among them is one special, one very, very special birthday card. Because you see, today, Alice is three. What's so extra special about this birthday card? Well, listen to what it says. Happy birthday. Hey, I hear you are three years old. Leastways, that's what I've been told. Three's a wonderful age to be. You're very important when you are three. There is something you should do now that you're much more than two. See your dentist right away. Make sure your teeth are all okay. A very special birthday message indeed. Now that Alice is more than two, it is vitally important that she make her first visit to the dentist. Alice's mother explains that the best time to make an appointment with the dentist is right now. If we put it off until tomorrow, we might forget. Alice's mother is a conscientious parent who safeguards the health of her child every day in every way, by proper diet, plenty of sleep, and frequent medical and dental checkups. She realizes that Alice's teeth are tremendously important to her total health. Betty suggests that she send Alice's mother literature prepared by the American Dental Association, which helps parents prepare their child for the important first visit to the dental office. Betty checks her appointment book and finds a convenient time for Alice's first visit, two weeks from today. Alice's mother also learns from Betty that parents can almost guarantee their children sound, healthy teeth and gums for a lifetime by following a program of regular dental checkups and by practicing sound dental health procedures in the home. Dr. Friend will explain to mother exactly which dental health safeguards should be followed. Ordinarily, little children have no fear of the dentist, unless they are taught to fear by adults or older children. Mother and Alice have talked about the interesting new experience of visiting Dr. Friend. Mother has explained why it is so important to visit the dentist regularly. As a result, Alice is looking forward eagerly to her first appointment with Dr. Friend. And what do you know? Mother was right. Look at this, a regular playroom and all these picture books. Oh, this is fun, thinks Alice. But now it's time for Betty, the dental assistant, to take Alice into the dental office. Mother remains in the waiting room. Some dentists prefer to examine a child without the parents standing by. However, because parents and dentists must work together to assure children a lifetime of smiles, Dr. Friend will talk with Mother later and explain to her the various aspects of Alice's daily dental health program in the home. Meanwhile, Alice is learning all about the dental office from Betty. However, Mother, after having read American Dental Association pamphlets, has already taught Alice a great deal about dental office procedures and equipment, and the professional uniforms worn by the dentist and his assistant. When Dr. Friend meets Alice, he knows how vitally important it is that this first visit be pleasant, for it will influence her attitude toward dental care for the rest of her life. While Betty prepares Alice for her dental examination, Dr. Friend enters his outer office for his first conference with Mother. Today's dentist does much more than merely repair decayed teeth and treat various gum diseases. He acts to prevent dental health problems before they begin. He functions as a dental health educator, instructing parents on how they can keep their children's teeth and gums sound and healthy by following proper dental health procedures in the home. Dr. Friend informs Alice's mother that the first dental examination of a child should take place by the time all 20 primary teeth are in the mouth. 
generally when the child is between two and a half and three years old. Occasionally, a child younger than two and a half must see a dentist. About 50% of all two and a half year old children show evidence of decay in one or more primary teeth. Dr. Friend, using a mouth mirror and an explorer, carefully examines each of Alice's teeth. He reports whatever defects he finds to his assistant, who records them on Alice's dental chart. It is important for parents to know that each tooth has five surfaces, and that decay may occur on any or all of the five sides. However, the dentist does much more than just examine teeth. Dr. Friend examines the tissues of Alice's mouth. He checks her bite, that is, the alignment of her teeth. He examines her glands for any telltale swelling that may be caused by infected teeth. And there is one more extremely important step that Dr. Friend will take before completing Alice's dental examination and diagnosis. Using only his mouth mirror and explorer, the dentist cannot be expected to detect all tooth defects. In order to make absolutely certain that no hidden cavities lurk between Alice's teeth, Dr. Friend takes x-ray pictures. Scientific studies show that without the aid of x-rays, the dentist misses a certain amount of beginning decay, tiny spots of decay that can rapidly become large cavities if not treated immediately. With today's modern equipment and protective measures, Dental x-rays are a safe and essential procedure for a complete dental diagnosis. Once more, Dr. Friend consults with mother explaining some of the findings in Alice's dental examination. Most particularly, he wishes to call her attention to the location of the first permanent molar, known as the six-year molar, because it will appear in Alice's mouth about the time she is six years old. An important tooth, and one of the most neglected. Dental records show it to be the most diseased tooth in the mouth. Parents should watch carefully for the six-year molar to erupt, that is, grow through the gum. Parents should pay careful attention to its care. If this permanent six-year molar is ever lost, no other tooth will grow in to replace it. Dr. Friend wishes to make certain that Alice's mother knows exactly where to look for the important six-year molar when it begins growing through the gum tissue in Alice's mouth. It will appear there, just behind the last primary molar. While Alice's x-rays are being developed, Dr. Friend and Mother resume their talk. He explains that primary teeth are extremely important for chewing, speech, and appearance. Primary or baby teeth have much to do with the condition of the permanent teeth which will grow in later. Many primary teeth remain in the mouth for 11 or 12 years. They must be maintained in a healthy condition until they are replaced by permanent teeth. Dental studies show that generally if primary teeth are maintained in a sound healthy condition, the permanent teeth which follow will also be sound and healthy. Should a child, either through accident or neglect, lose his primary teeth too early, his speech may be handicapped. These twins, because their front teeth are missing, have developed poor speech habits, and they are undergoing speech therapy to correct them. Naturally, every child is without his front teeth for a short time. Normally, however, permanent teeth grow in quickly to fill the vacant space. Teeth are vitally necessary for good appearance. Loss of even one front tooth can radically alter a person's appearance. Whenever a primary tooth is lost earlier than it should, either through accident or neglect, the teeth on either side will tend to lean or drift into the open space, closing it up, making it difficult or impossible for the permanent tooth to grow in later. Because, like a rotten apple in a barrel, a decayed tooth may cause other teeth to decay, 
it often must be removed by the dentist. A space maintainer, as seen here, keeps the space left by the missing tooth open. This x-ray picture also shows the permanent tooth growing beneath the gum. When it is ready to erupt through the gum, the space maintainer will be removed. What causes tooth decay? Bacteria which are found in everyone's mouth feed on sugar to produce a powerful acid which attacks and destroys tooth enamel. Therefore, sugar is the greatest enemy of teeth. Each time a child or an adult eats a meal or snack, he consumes a certain amount of sugar. Immediately, the mouth bacteria begin feeding upon the sugar and rapidly producing acid. Acid can go to work on tooth enamel as quickly as three minutes after eating. And this acid action can last as long as 90 minutes. Notice the peaks and valleys on the chart held by Dr. Friend. Notice that acid formation in the mouth rises sharply after each meal. The same condition occurs following between meal snacks. It's easy to see that each time a child consumes candy, cake, pie, cookies, or other sweets, this decay action begins automatically and almost immediately. The dental profession does not wish to condemn children to a sweetless existence. However, the wise parent controls the amount of sweets eaten by children by substituting foods with less sugar content. For example, for between-meal snacks in place of sugary cookies, give tasty crackers or deviled eggs, which have a high food value. In place of sugar-saturated drinks, offer them fruit juices and milk, which are far more nourishing. Or try the traditional American hot dog, which is far less sugary, for example, than a jelly peanut butter sandwich. Apples are excellent snack food, and they help clean teeth while being eaten. By substituting nourishing foods such as these for sweets, parents can cut the decay rate of their children's teeth substantially. However, parents must do more. They must make certain that their children brush their teeth regularly. Dr. Friend informs Alice's mother that the toothbrush, properly used, is the best weapon in the daily fight against tooth decay. Brush teeth as they grow, upper teeth downward, lower teeth upward. Give each tooth 10 strokes. Brush front, back, and top of each tooth. Work bristles between teeth to remove debris lodged there. Remember, decay action can begin as soon as three minutes after eating, so brush immediately after each meal or snack. If one cannot brush each time, rinse the mouth vigorously with water to wash away food particles clinging to teeth. Remove the food particles that stick to teeth and lodge between them, and the bacteria in the mouth starve. They then cannot produce the acid which attacks and destroys teeth. Even at three, Alice is old enough to brush her teeth properly, but only under the watchful eye of her mother. Surprisingly enough, many individuals don't know the proper toothbrushing technique, and knowing it can prevent much tooth decay. Any dentist is happy to demonstrate. Mother will have Alice practice at home so that she knows how. Alice's x-rays are now ready for viewing. They show Dr. Friend that Alice has some small areas of beginning tooth decay between the teeth. It is important for parents to realize, as Alice's mother does, that without the aid of x-ray, the tiny beginning decay areas in a child's teeth probably will escape detection by the dentist. Dental decay knows no age. Many two and a half and three year old children already have beginning decay which can spread quickly, causing a large cavity. Filling tiny cavities at once halts decay, saves costly repairs later. Compare Alice's x-rays with these of a four year old. Note the developing permanent teeth growing down from above. But is this a sad picture of neglect? Rampant decay has all but destroyed these primary teeth. Mother asks, what else can be done to assure Alice the best in dental health? 
there is one more dental procedure that will help Alice. The proper use of fluorides. Your dentist will advise you regarding the type of treatment he recommends in accordance with the type of fluoride he uses. Alice should have her first topical treatment now. Today, however, the most effective and safe health measure to combat tooth decay is the daily ingestion of the recommended amount of fluoride in drinking water. It is most beneficial during the growing period of the teeth. Now Alice's first dental examination is completed. And as a reward for good behavior, Dr. Friend gives her an apple, one of the recommended snack foods, low in sugar. The important dental health steps for parents to follow are these. Regular visits to the dentist beginning at age three, as Alice did. Control the amount of sweets eaten. Sugar destroys teeth. Substitute non-sugary foods for between meal snacks. Proper tooth brushing immediately after each meal or snack. Making the best use of fluorides by drinking community water with the recommended fluoride content and topical treatment of a fluoride solution by a dentist to the teeth. Yes, Alice is three. A fortunate little girl because her mother and her dentist are working together to safeguard her dental health. Children born today whose parents follow the dentist's prescribed measures can be sure of sound, healthy teeth and gums throughout their childhood. And if these children, as they grow to adulthood, continue to follow proper dental health procedures, they can count on keeping their permanent teeth in a healthy condition for life. Yes, indeed. The dental profession offers today's youngsters a lifetime of smiles.